two weeks without power. That's what my buddy just went through. His generator ran out of gas on day two and his radios went silent. He learned a hard lesson that energy independence isn't just about having a generator, it's about having a power source that never runs out of fuel. When Hurricane Helene hit the Carolinas, people were without power for weeks. Gas stations were closed, and people were having to drive hours just to fill up a can. That got me thinking, my generator is useless without gas. So I thought, what would it take to power my ham shack that doesn't take gas, doesn't make noise, and keeps me on the air even when the grid's down? So let's design a solar system that can power computers, radios, lights, even a fan, everything but the HVAC, all without having to use the grid. To do that, we first need to estimate power. Before you even go looking at equipment or buy something, you need to know how much power you're using so you can select the right equipment. So there's two ways you can go about doing it. You could add up what each device consumes in power. So if we was to take my ham shack, for example, I have a PC that has a 650 watt power supply. I also have a power supply for my radios, which is about 400 watts. If we add in a box fan, keep us cool, they run about 65 watts on high, and an LED light is only 15 watts. In total, that's about 1,130 watts. But to be honest, you're not using that power the whole time. Your PC isn't using the full 650 watts, and neither is your power supply for your radios. So what I did to figure out how much power I was using was I get one of these watt meters. They're cheap, you can find them everywhere. I'll put a link in the description where I bought one. Plug this into the wall. You can hook it up to a power strip and hook all your devices up at once. Or if you have too many devices, you might want to plug one or two in at a time so you don't overload the unit. So I ran all my devices on this for 24 hours and I found that I was averaging about 300 watts an hour. That's a big difference from 1,130 watts. So I'm going to use the 300 watts as the basis for how much power I need. Now I'm also going to say that that 300 watts I'm using about 8 hours a day. So if we take that 300 watts times the 8 hours, that gives us 2400 watts of power. So that's how much power I consume in a 24 hour period and that's what I need to provide. So the first thing we need to look at is what size battery do we need? Since we know we have 300 watts times 8 hours, we need 2400 watt hours of power. I happen to have two of these 12.8 volt 100 amp hour batteries. I have two ways that I can use them. I can connect them parallel and that'll give me 12 volts 200 amp hours. Or I could connect them in series which will give me 24 volts but only 100 amp hours. But you have to remember either way I connect those it's the same 2400 watt hours. The reason I decided to go 24 volt instead of 12 volt is I can use smaller wire because it's less amperage. So now that we have the battery figured out, we need to know how many solar panels do we need to charge that. So we could take the 2400 watt hours and divide it by 5. The reason we use 5 is that's the average amount of full sunlight that your solar panels would get. And 2400 divided by 5 is 480. So we need 480 watts worth of solar panels. I just happen to have 8 of these 100 watt solar panels that I'm going to use for my system. So using 800 watts times 5 actually gives me 4,000 watt hours of energy. So this should be plenty of power to charge the batteries and run my gear at the same time. Now the next step in designing our system is choosing which inverter to use. I do happen to have this 1,000 watt inverter that claims to be a pure sine wave inverter. I have used it in the past, but only occasionally. It does seem to be noise free. But since I'm running my system in a 24 volt, I decided to go ahead and upgrade to a, I decided to go ahead and upgrade, man, this is heavy. I decided to go ahead and upgrade to the Victron Energy. This is a pure sine wave inverter that takes 24 volts in and gives me 1200 watts out, which easily covers my 300 watt load, but also has enough power to cover the 1150 watt hour if everything was running at its max, which I don't see happening. Another reason I chose to go with Victron Energy is because of their reliability. It didn't take long in my research to find out that Victron was very popular in the RV world and off-grid world. They've been around for many years and are designed to be used in mission-critical applications, so it's perfect for my needs. 
But let's take a look at the inside of these two and see why they're so different. If we take a look at this, if we take a look at this inverter, we can see that we do have MOSFET switching, which is at a high frequency. So this probably is a decent pure sine wave inverter. But if we take a look at the Victron energy, the first thing we notice is this massive turret. That should get smoke and ape excited. It also features a bunch of MOSFET transistors, giving it a high frequency design as well. But due to this massive transformer, this could handle surges way better than this design can. So you could easily run inductive motors, fans, pool pumps, air conditionings if it's the right wattage. So this is definitely a more reliable unit. And one of the other reasons I decided to go with the Victron Energy is because I can use the Bluetooth dongle so I can connect to this with my phone and monitor my energy usage. For most people, that's probably not something that we need, but it is something that I'm curious to do. Also, as I expand into the Victron Energy world, all of their devices can communicate together. So to continue with that, I decided to upgrade my solar charge controller as well. And I'm going to go with this Victron Energy, which is the 15035. That means it could handle a PV voltage from the solar panels of 150 volts and be able to provide 35 amps of charging current, which would be perfect for the two batteries that I have set up. And just like with the inverter, the solar charge controller has the VE direct port, which I could use the Bluetooth or later use it with their fancier displays. So when it came time to purchase my gear, and I did purchase it myself, I decided to go with Signature Solar. There are many places that provide Victron equipment, but no one can match the support you get from Signature Solar. So I'll put a link to the products in the description below. So to recap the system so far, we're going to use eight of these 100 watt solar panels into the Victron Solar Charge Controller. The charge controller will then connect to the batteries to keep them charged. Then the Victron inverter will connect to the batteries to supply power to my ham shack. So what's your thoughts on the system so far? Let me know in the comments below. In the next video, we'll cover the installation and test the system. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it.